And now we're beginning a section which is called um, as solutions. The first thing we want to know is to understand the, defi the definition of a solution as what is a solution because mainly when we talk about solution this is the image that comes into mind where you're adding salt or any kind of substance to a liquid. However, solutions are not just restricted to a solid um, being added to a liquid. Solutions can um, take um, any um, state of uh, matter and be uh, added to another state. So before we go on, let's just um, learn the name of the two substances that are added making a solutions. Now the substance that is in the larger amount, uh, that is the amount that uh, in, in this picture which is the water um, is the dissolver. The dissolver um, is called as the solvent. However, uh, the, the, the item or the substance that is in small amount and which is added to the dissolver is called as solute. So keeping these two terminologies, we will now look at a solution of gases. For example, air is a, is a solution because we have oxygen gas in a smaller amount dissolved in the, uh, in the nitrogen gas, which is in the larger amount. Um, whenever we usually say what the uh, uh, um, a medium is a solution, um, uh, compared to uh, something that's not a uh, solution, it's mainly keeping in mind that it is a homogeneous uh, substance, which is that it's all, uh, all of the solute particles are evenly spread throughout. Uh, uh, solutions cannot uh, separate filtrations. Uh, they can, however, be as, um, separated by evaporation. For example, if you have salt and water, you can't really separate out with filtration, but you can evaporate the water to uh, to leave the residue of the salt. Um, most solutions are um, uh, not visible unless they're colored. So for example, if you added ink or India ink or any kind of uh, permanganate to water, then you will get a colorless, colored solution. Now besides using, um, besides using um, uh, the gas as an example of solutions. Let's look at some other properties of solutions. Now you can also have a gas in a liquid, for example soda water in which we have carbon dioxide dissolved in a liquid. So these are all your soda cans that you could visualize or imagine. Uh, household ammonia, if those of you who use household ammonia for cleaning, ammonia is a gas uh, but it's dissolved in water. Another one is uh, vinegar which is called as a acidic acid. It's an example where a liquid is dissolved in another liquid. And the last example is the seawater where you have um, the solid dissolved in water. So I'm giving you examples keeping in mind that different solutions can uh, be of different mediums. Here is an example using uh, a, a liquid in a solid. For example, the dental amalgam uses liquid dissolved in silver. Brass and steel are also um, two alloys and they are both solid in a solid. Uh, brass is zinc dissolved in copper and uh, steel is carbon, solid carbon dissolved in or mixed in um, iron. Actually these two are usually um, uh, substances in which both of the solids are um, liquefied and then mixed uh, to give you a more homogeneous uh, texture. Okay, now let's look at um, let me get to the next slide. Sometimes it gives me a little trouble. Okay, now um, water is considered to be the universal solvent. Uh, why do we call water a universal solvent is uh, very important to understand, especially for those of you who are going into biology classes because it's going to come up many times. Um, water is present in abundance in living cell and it's also a universal solvent. Water dissolves uh, two forms of substances. The first kind of substances are called as the polar substances. A polar substance would be those that can ionize. For example, um, NaCl would be a polar substance because it can dissolve in water to give you sodium ions uh, plus the chloride ions. Um, so anytime you have um, 
a, a molecule that has two poles. For example, if I take HCl, which is a gas, which is hydrochloric acid, that would also be um, polar. Another example is water by itself. Each water molecule can dissolve to the next water molecule because it has polar um, bonds in them. Now. Uh, substances that have polar um, bonds also uh, result in uh, hydrogen bonds. Now here is an example where you can see each of these is a water molecule. Uh, the, the one in red is in particular the oxygen atom and you can see the oxygen is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Now each individual bond that I'm placing over here in blue, each individual bond is a polar bond. Now a polar bond is resulting because there is an unequal distribution of electrons. This is something we learned in the previous chapter. Now keeping that in mind, um, each of the bond uh, then results in a, a partial negative charge on oxygen and a partial positive charge on hydrogen. Notice over here we see uh, dots that are represented where it's showing that the electronegative oxygen is attracted to the uh, electronegative uh, positive hydrogen atom and this results in these dotted bonds that are called as hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds is the reason where uh, a molecule such as glucose that is not uh, polar can dissolve in water because if, later on you will look at the structure of glucose and glucose has um, a series of carbon in them and each of these carbon has uh, an abundant OH a bond. So I'm just going to draw you a couple of these to give you a sense of how a glucose um, is able to dissolve in water since we know that water um, sugar dissolves in water. So here is a structure of glucose. You can see it's a pretty large structure. But um, hang on. Okay, go go back over here. And um, just a second. Oops. Uh, Okay, there is. So there is the OH bond. So now you can see that um, uh, the glucose has abundant of these OH bonds. Now because of this abundant of glucose uh, OH bonds, the glucose molecule is able to dissolve in water. Now here is an example of sodium chloride and here is glucose. You can see the two, there are two different kinds of structures. One molecule is polar the other is dissolving due to hydrogen bonds. Now uh, these um, examples are very important to realize why water is the universal solvent. Universal solvent means that it's a solvent that can dissolve a wide variety of molecules. Uh, sodium chloride is an ion and uh, when it um, ionizes in water it um, attracts the polar water molecules. Now keeping um, the, the terminology of a <clears throat> universal solvent, um, there is a simple term that is called as like dissolves like. Uh, like dissolves like um, uh, suggests that molecules that are polar are attracted by polar solvents. For example, water will dissolve polar solutes. And substances that are nonpolar, for example, hexane that you may not have heard of, but it's present in paint thinners, dissolves nonpolar solutes. So for example, if you have oil or grease spill and you try to um, use water to dissolve it, it does not work out because oil and grease are nonpolar substances and water is a polar substance. So water will only dissolve polar molecules and nonpolar substances will dissolve nonpolar molecules. Um, some more examples of of uh, nonpolar molecules that I'll want to give you, and you may have heard of those. For example, acetone is a nonpolar molecule, um, alcohol is a nonpolar molecule. Another one that we will hear later on in organic chemistry is toluene. So these are examples of other solvents that uh, will dissolve nonpolar solutes. Here in this image, you can see the methanol, in, and here's water solvent, and here's methanol and water in bonding. Um, 
substances and water are either um, termed as strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. Um, as the name tells you, strong electrolyte means that it produce ions, and when, when they produce ions, they are very good conductors of electrical um, current. For example, any kind of uh, salt, magnesium chloride, sodium chloride, aluminum chloride, water is, uh, is that's why when you have water in, in, the, in, the, um, in your restrooms, and it's important that there's a little reminder there that says do not uh, throw in any electrical gadgets in water because why because a, a tap water is full of minerals and it conducts electrical current however weak electrolytes uh, do not produce uh, as many ions and non electrolytes are those that do not produce ions at all so again these three are important to um, realize how water is um, an excellent solvent Now, I'm going to stop the lecture recording over here and uh, this will conclude the first section of um, solutions and we will then go on in, in a little while to the second section.